Hello! In this video, I want to share with you how to cut a fun, peasy, textured, short pixie haircut. This is a gal that I have been doing her hair for, I want to say, five or six years. And um, you, if you look in my other videos in here, you will see her in one of my videos that I, one of my very first videos I ever did. Um, and I used to cut her hair extremely short. And then she decided that she said she wanted more hair. She wanted it flippy and uh, PC and just kind of unkept looking. So I thought I would um, set my camera up next to my workstation and um, videotape it. Um, I could not get this up close. I want to tell you right off the bat. Uh, I, I am starting to get better at where to put um, the camera, but um, anyway, I hope you're able to get a lot out of this video. So um, one of the main tools that I'm using for this is a razor. So um, if you are a stylist that's afraid of a razor, I hope this video encourages you um, and inspires you to pull it out and try it. The razor I'm using is a, it's just a feather razor. I picked it up at Cosmoprof. They're not much. I want to say, I don't know, $30. They're not, they're not expensive at all. The blades that you replace um, aren't bad as well. I always start each cut with a fresh razor. I want to point that out when I'm working on a client because if you start to cut and they feel it, it's very uncomfortable for them. So anyways, what I've done is I've already sectioned the hair off um, right at the parietal ridge down uh, right above the occipital bone. And I'm starting in the nape. And um, as I started in the nape, I even subsectioned that off a little bit more. I parted it down the middle and worked from side to side. So as you could see, I pulled it out from the head, held the, uh, my fingers uh, horizontal, and pulled it out from the head and pull, and then I would use my razor just past my finger. Now, when I'm working the razor, I'm not laying it completely parallel to the hair and I'm not cutting straight in. I think it's important that you notice, um, and it's, I know it's a little harder to see, but when I pull this, um, I'm getting better at my editing, guys. But um, I, I want you to see that I'm going, I'm, I'm going in at a slight angle so that when you cut it off, it's not a blunt line, it's kind of feathering it. And I think a great way to describe what it's doing to the end, because it's encouraging movement, first of all, but have you, you know, think back when you were a child and either you used a knife to carve soap, how it kind of created an angle on the end. Well, that is in essence what you're doing with a razor. You are creating that PC kind of feathery end and it, it encourages the hair to create movement. But what also it's doing is it's removing weight. So um, now that we've moved to the side of the face, I want it to be, I wonder if she likes PCness here and I like, the haircut soft, you'll find in most of my haircuts that are short, I, I tend to have a softer vibe to it. So by elevating it up away from where it lives and pulling it up and then cutting, what I'm doing is I'm creating graduation and kind of a buildup of weight there right above um, her ear. And uh, the first section, um, you can kind of see here on the ear going down to the nape, um, I'm working in a diagonal with her hairline. This just um, keeps the, you know, me from getting any lines or any blunt edges around the face. Hopefully you can see a little bit better with this side. Here again, see how I'm taking a, a diagonal that's parallel to her hairline and comb everything away. That way you're just focused on that hair and in the scooping motion, pulling up that hair and then going in and just feathering off those ends. So this is going to create a bit of graduation and roundness here, but also by scooping it up, that hair that was scooped up is going to be left a little bit longer. So you're going to have that pieciness. Now, as you're cutting short hair, um, or any cut really, I'm always checking for balance. So you saw just a second ago how I stopped and I stood in front of her and I felt each side just to make sure that 
I'm on track and I'm on point so that each side is even. Now I'm just bringing a section down to where I had elevated before and bringing it down to the guide that I created and then working from the ear all the way down to the nape where we had created and established our length in the perimeter. So the point I want to make here too is I'm working with the head shape. I'm working with the hairline. So my sections are, um, are mirroring her hairline. And here I'm standing behind her and I'm looking at her from afar in the mirror. And I share that with you because sometimes we get to working and we're so close up in our work that we, we can't see it, see some of the um, maybe and hair that we should be cutting or, or sometimes we end up cutting something that we don't want to. So I encourage you that as you're working through your haircut, to stop and look at it from afar, either step away from it or turn your client and look at it from the mirror. You're going to get a completely different view. So now that we've established the length in the nape, we've established it around the ear and around the face. Now I have sectioned it off right below the crown. And what I've done is I've isolated right below the crown and the occipital bone. And this is a really important part of the head shape to consider when you're cutting short hair um, because some people might have a real protruding this up little bone. Some people might not have one at all. Um, in this case, my client has a really beautiful curvature to her head. And um, she's very, very thick here. Sometimes you'll find clients that have... Uh, fine hair, but they're going to have maybe not as thick around the face, but they're really thick in the area that I have isolated here right below the crown. So it's really basically at the parietal ridge all the way around a horseshoe section is basically what I've done. And I'm taking vertical sections with a traveling guide and I'm taking that section and the from the nape area that I cut and just cutting it vertically on the head shape. Now I've changed my shears. I am using a texturizing shear. There again, it is by Hiroki, and you can learn all about it in um, in my uh, at my website when you hit the shop page. Just hit Hiroki. But I am using the texturizing shear with the wider teeth. At the moment, I am I have a brain blank, and I cannot remember the exact name of this one. But it is the it is the texturizing shear that is wider because what I'm wanting to do with this shear is I'm doing two things with it. First, I am removing length. And I'm removing length with more of a jagged edge. I don't want any blunt lines in this haircut. As I stated before, my client likes it PC, texturized. She likes the messy look. So I don't want any blunt lines. So I'm opening and closing those shears to remove length. But if you notice, sometimes when I'm working, I pull the hair out and I take a cut closer in as I as I get as I'm cutting each time I open and close I'm kind of sliding my fingers out toward the end. And what this does is it creates internal support for the haircut. So you're going from you're creating a shorter pieces inside. You when you cut, you're cutting like every other piece. Then you kind of move your finger a little bit before you close again and you cut again. And then I pull it out and then I cut again. And I kind of call this kind of a stacking method. And it creates this shape within the shape. So as you see, as I'm working, I'm really just feeling the hair. I'm, I'm looking at it in the mirror. I'm looking at it from the far, seeing if I've re removed enough length. Um, am I getting enough movement out of it? Have I removed enough weight? Um, here again, I'm just turning around. You can see I'm looking at it from the mirror and just making sure that I've cut enough length off. Now, before I move into the top of the head, I want to finish creating the shape all around the head. And now I need to create my shape in the fringe. Now, before I start, I just want to check in with my client. I want to make sure that I'm on point with where she wants her length. Bangs and fringe are a huge deal. If you get the bangs too 
short, you could potentially lose a client. This is what they're looking at in the mirror every single day. So, and if you, if you, uh, in this particular look, if I get it too blunt, she's not going to be happy either. So as you can see here, I have, um, sectioned off and isolated the, the, the frontal bone area here. And what I'm working on is I'm just working, taking vertical sections and I am slightly angling my finger back so that it's going from shorter to longer. And the only way I can describe that to you because I know I do not not have this close enough for you to really see up close, which by the way, in the future, I'm going to, I'm going to do some, um, just some, uh, classes on this here on YouTube and I will be up close and personal on a mannequin head and just really going in a deeper dive on this, but I'm angling, um, my finger back a little bit so that it's shorter going towards her top of her head, the apex of her head, and longer toward the fringe. So I'm going shorter to longer pieces. And what that does is it creates a wispy, PC vibe. And remember, short hair pushes and directs long hair. My client likes to have that fringy vibe of a bang. And so it kind of pushes the bang or the fringe off to the side a little bit while um, keeping it fringy and PC looking. So now that I've established the link on the fringe and the link around the face and on the ear, we established the link in the nape and then we moved, uh, we took a horseshoe parting all around the parietal ridge, the widest part of the head, and uh, worked, um, cut that hair right at the occipital bone um, um, and right below the parietal ridge in the back up to the side of the ear um, to remove bulk and to create that PC effect. And now we're going to combine everything together and create the layering and combine it all together with the top or the highest point of the head, which is the apex. So um, just to give you a little review on that, remember the apex is the highest part of the head. The very top part, an easy way to do that is to take your comb and set it on the top of your client's head, stand to the side, and where the comb is touching the head, that's your highest part. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. So I've been cutting this gal's hair for a long time. I just know her head. So what I did here was I created a guide for myself from the fringe area, the bang area that I cut, and then I, I took a section from that all the way along the top and connected it to the back where I cut. And I created enough guide so that I could carry that in all the way around the head. And then I work on a pivot off that guide, meaning pivoting sections. So we start with a vertical section and then the apex being the center of your pie. I'm taking sections off that and cutting it, pulling it straight up from the head and cutting from the guide that I cut, the length of the, the cut that I cut the apex and blending it to the link that I created on the side. So I guess a great way to put that is it's almost like a dot to dot. I created the guide in the nape. I created the guide up to the crown area. I created a length and a guide around the sides. I created a guide and link in the fringe. Then I took the link from the fringe, took a vertical section, and cut from the fringe all the way to the back where the crown is and created and blended it all together, broke that in half, and then worked a pivoting guide or pivoting section off the apex and just worked my way around the head. I'm still using a texture shear, you can see, so I'm going through it. Um, I'm not just holding my fingers in one place as I cut. I am slowly moving my finger up each time I open and close the hair. And as you can see, it's just creating this nice, PC, fun vibe. Now, just a little, um, some key points on this is First of all, you want to make sure that before you do this on your client, you want to make sure she's got thick hair. You want to make sure that her hair can handle it. 
this particular client has extremely thick hair. I feel like she's like a chia pet. Every time she comes in, I'm all, what happened? Oh, I feel like if I looked at her long enough, I'd see her hair grow. But anyways, um, you want to make sure that your client, when you're doing this particular technique and using these shears and creating this type of a look on the hair, that the client has the thickness and texture of hair to be able to have this look. There again, you can kind of see how I'm working. I'm taking um, a little bit of my last section with me and just working my, my way around the head. Because I've created a guide on the top and I have a guide around the perimeter, I have a beginning and I have an end. I can see the points and I'm just working with the round of the head. Now, a lot of this type of cutting, I don't, I don't know, it seems like it, I've had people tell me that I'm an intuitive cutter. I guess what I mean by that um, is that this is where your creative juices are. You need to be looking at it and seeing how you're liking it. You can see how as I'm working through the head, I'm, I'm, I'm looking back at the mirror, I'm seeing how it looks, I'm feeling it with my fingers, I'm deciding if this is the type if it, if it's coming together so it's just it's just um you're kind of creating as you're going this is more of a it's still a precision cut but it's also more free spirited so there isn't any blunt lines in here um you are working with your artistic disciplines in that we are um, parting the head shape off we know where we're at on the head shape we're creating a guide um, we're using a traveling, um, a traveling guide, um, but we're using more creative tools to cut this. Now that little last piece that I cut, a little bit of fine tuning. I used my razor there because I felt like she was just a little bit thick there around the face. And now, remember how I told you she's really thick in the back? Well, now I'm using my razor to remove some of that weight and, um, encourage um, movement in the hair. This is her crown area. We all know what happens in the crown area, calyx. So if you were to go in with your razor, and um, I'm just kind of going in on the first bend, I'm using it like a pencil and kind of channel cutting little hairs out. So it just um, lightens it up. It creates more support, shorting hair, uh, short hair in there to support the, the longer hair, keeping it out from the head and discouraging that calic to uh, form and flatten. I'm gonna take a moment here and wanna thank everyone that has subscribed to my channel. Um, it's growing every day and it just, it's, it's fun to watch. Uh, I literally had somebody that said, hey, Sherry, you should put your camera up and start posting what you do. Um, you're fun to watch. And uh, um, I know that you could, um, some people could really learn from you. So I did. And um, hopefully my videos are getting better each, each week. But I just want to thank you for watching. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the uh, you subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe. I'd love for you to like and share if you know of anybody that would benefit from this. Also, I just want to share with you that uh, if you are a new hairstylist, um, be sure to uh, click the link in my bio, visit my website. I have, um, I have a lot of blogs on uh, business, uh, ways to build your clientele. I have a lot of good stuff there on that website. And um, I would love to get it in your hands. So here I just, I'm putting in a little bit of a, I like to use when I'm styling uh, hair like this, I like to use something with sea salt in it, something that creates that texture and that kind of like, almost a dirty feel to the hair. Um, in this case, I used, I, I use a product line called Seven, it's S-E-V-E-N, um, and uh, I just, I like, I'm using their, their tassel spray and it just works beautifully in this style. So I just sprayed it throughout, combed it through, and now I'm just using my blow dryer, I'm just using my fingers, 
and getting it to um, just shape where I want it, want it to go. I'm using the dryer on a high heat, low speed. I'm using my fingers while it's hot to kind of mold the hair where I want it to go. And uh, literally, it's just a free, um, using your fingers, there's really no round brushing. You can round brush it. Sometimes I'll take my, uh, on the top where she gets a little bit poofy, I'll take my vent brush after it's all dry and um, just put my dryer on a high heat, low speed, and just take my vent brush and brush the hair in the opposite direction I want it to go and go back and forth on the head. And then take my blow dryer away. Here, I, I'm doing it here because um, I just, I feel like it's a little too poofy. And then, you know, as it's cooling, comb it back over to where it's at and just keep combing it until it's cool. Remember your hot and cold properties. Hot air moves it, cold air sets it. So it's not set until it's cool. So going back through with that warm air and just softening the edges makes all the difference. Or if you need a little bit of volume in one area, you can go back in after it's dry and heat it, form it in the position you want, and then hold it there until it's cool. Anyway, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to let me know. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And also visit my website at onpointhairacademy.com. I have tons of blogs that are I know will be helpful for you and, and your business. And also some um, free downloads for you on how to build your clientele quickly. And also, if you're looking to find the right salon for you, I've got you covered. Be sure to download your free guide and a pros and cons guide to uh, your, you know, picking the right salon. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching. And uh, there's something I always say, and uh, it is your work. It's not about you. It is about how you make your clients feel. Your clients will remember more about how you made them feel than anything you said or did. So, um, and one last thing here, I forgot about this last part real quick. I just am going back in and looking at it and I decided I needed a little bit more off here and there. That's all just kind of fine tuning this haircut.